Street Fighter 2, the iconic video game sensation that echoes through gaming history, boasts an astonishing array of arcade iterations, console conversions and platform releases. Its presence in the gaming landscape is so vast that attempting to keep track of every version feels like a futile endeavour. The sheer abundance of Street Fighter 2 editions is staggering, pushing the boundaries of what one might expect from a single title, yet it's precisely this unyielding proliferation that has helped cement Street Fighter 2 as a perennial favourite, continually enriching both players' experiences and Capcom's coffers as gamers eagerly purchase it time and again. But the game's true high would, of course, take place during the 90s. During the zenith of its popularity, Street Fighter 2 found its most prominent home on 16-bit consoles such as the Super Nintendo and Sega Mega Drive, captivating players with its visceral combat and memorable characters. However, what may surprise some is that the game's reach extended even to the hardware of lesser capabilities. So in today's video, we will celebrate this classic game's arrival on Sega hardware that predates the company's legendary 16-bit offering. I am Lady Decade and this is the insane story of how a weird version of Street Fighter 2 ended up officially on the Sega Master System years after the Genesis. While many are familiar with the unlicensed NES conversions of the game crafted by Hummer Team in Taiwan, these titles serve as interesting illegal bootlegs that were created without the go-ahead from Capcom. However, another intriguing chapter in Street Fighter 2's history unfolds with the revelation of an officially licensed 8-bit version tailored for Sega consoles. Enter Street Fighter 2 The Master System Edition, a remarkable adaptation that not only graced Sega consoles, but also emerged onto the scene a staggering six years after the game's arcade debut. This means that the mere existence of this belated release begs the question, how did we get here and what circumstances led to this anomaly's creation? Let's explore. To understand why a Master System version of this game arrived so late, we first need to acknowledge the game's enduring appeal, which helps partially explain why there would have still been a demand for a game that was released so late to the party. What makes Street Fighter 2 truly exceptional is its rich tapestry of intricately designed characters, each endowed with their own unique fighting styles and mesmerizing animations. From the lightning fast strikes of Ryu to the thunderous kicks of Chun Li, every bout is a symphony of martial prowess and a strategic finesse. Such an arcade experience was so well crafted, the title has influenced every fighting game ever made to this very day. But Street Fighter 2's appeal extends beyond beyond its cast of characters and fluid combat mechanics. It introduced groundbreaking features such as command-based special moves, a six-button configuration and a revolutionary combo system setting a new standard for fighting games going forward. Street Fighter 2 is more than just a video game. It's a testament to the enduring power of passion and innovation in the world of gaming. As of the current generation of gaming, ports of this seminal title continue to emerge, with adaptations gracing contemporary hardware like the Nintendo Switch, ensuring that its impact remains felt among new generations of players. However, amidst this expansive tapestry of adaptations, one particular rendition stands out as both peculiar and intriguing – the Master System version. We should go into depth about this one in a moment, but if you are so into fighting games that niche nonsense like this video interests you, then I thought I should probably let you know that I can get you Ultra Street Fighter 4 for less than $2.50, a price that is 92% cheaper than on Steam, 49% off of the deluxe edition of Street Fighter 6, 82% off of Street Fighter 5, or 78% off the 12 game anniversary collection featuring all the retro arcade classics. Get these games and many more at bargain bucket prices and support the channel by using my instant gaming affiliate link via the pinned comment. Happy shopping! The arrival of Street Fighter 2 on the Sega Master System in 1997 raises eyebrows and sparks curiosity. Six years had passed since its arcade debut and five since its illustrious port to the 16-bit Super Nintendo. In an era dominated by the likes of the Sony PlayStation, Nintendo 64 and Sega Saturn, the decision to release this Capcom classic on an 8-bit system 
might sound perplexing to some, especially when we take into account the imminent arrival of the Sega Dreamcast. With such hardware on the horizon, the timing appeared questionable. So, what factors drove this seemingly unconventional move? The answer lies in a single word, Tectoy, a now legendary video game entity that I adore discussing here. This Brazilian electronics company held a licensing agreement with Sega, allowing them to manufacture and distribute Sega systems, including the Master System. Despite the industry's shift towards more advanced hardware, Tectoy found a niche market for the Master System, particularly in Brazil, a region where access to more modern consoles was less readily available. Through savvy marketing and strategic distribution, Tectoy sustained the Master System's relevance, catering to a demographic of gamers who embraced its simplicity and affordability. Tectoy's commitment to the Master System extended well into the late 90s and beyond, displaying a steadfast dedication to allowing Brazilians cheap access to the world of console gaming. So while the gaming landscape continued to evolve with each passing year, Street Fighter II's unexpected journey to the Master System took place in an era in which many people had already purchased Super Mario 64 the previous year. According to online discussions, many Brazilians opted for more contemporary gaming hardware, often obtained through unofficial channels. However, Sega's tech toy offerings presented a legal and cost-effective alternative for those seeking gaming systems. The competitive edge of Sega tech toy stemmed primarily from their local manufacturing operations in Brazil. In contrast, imported consoles were burdened with exorbitant import tariffs, making them less accessible to the general populace. This disparity in accessibility played a pivotal role in extending the lifespan of the Sega Master System in Brazil, shedding light on the rationale behind the late release of games like Street Fighter 2 in 1997. In fact, a plethora of titles, including Street Fighter 2, were tailor-made for the South American market, giving rise to a myriad of peculiar and exclusive regional releases. Tectoy took the helm in programming these games directly, securing licenses from renowned developers like Capcom in the case of Street Fighter 2. However, the circumstances surrounding this partnership deviate from the norm. Indeed, the decision to publish Street Fighter 2 on the Sega Master System in the late 90s raised eyebrows, considering the prevailing industry sentiment favouring newer platforms. Allegedly, even Capcom harboured reservations about releasing their flagship title on outdated hardware. It's said that Tectoy's pitch to Capcom was nothing short of amusing. Legend has it that Tectoy presented their version of Street Fighter 2 to Capcom employees, masquerading it as a Sega Mega Drive title. The resulting shock and disdain from Capcom's representatives were palpable, as the game failed to meet the standards set by even the likes of the then-aged Special Champion Edition. In response to Capcom's initial feedback, Tectoy was informed that significant improvements were required to meet the standards necessary for using the Street Fighter 2 license. It will all have to be redone. All of it! However, in a surprising turn of events during their presentation, Tectoy revealed that their Street Fighter 2 build was running on the modest 8-bit hardware of the Sega Master System. This revelation left a Capcom employee visibly astonished, leading to a pivotal moment where Tectoy's CEO, Stefano Arnold, received unexpected praise. Well done. The Capcom representative remarked, I've never seen a game taken so much from the Master System CPU as you did. I think we will allow you to release it. And so, with this groundbreaking approval, Tectoy proceeded to release the Street Fighter 2 game for the Master System in 1997, marking a significant milestone in gaming history. Now, let's dive into the game itself and assess whether it lives up to its reputation as the most technically impressive title on the Sega Master System, with no better place to start, in my opinion, than looking at the lineup of available fighters. In this iteration, players are presented with a selection of eight playable characters, a departure 
departure from the original arcade release, which featured 12 characters, albeit four of these were just bosses with the first edition. With some of the bosses available to play as from the beginning with this one, notably absent are Dalsim and E Honda, replaced instead by Balrog and M Bison. This alteration likely stems from the technical constraints of the system, as the game's hardware limitations necessitated a streamlined roster of fighters for a smoother gameplay experience. Despite it being an 8-bit title, Street Fighter 2 for the Master System boasts graphics that rival some of the system's most beloved titles, such as Alex Kidd in Miracle World. The visuals faithfully captured the essence of Street Fighter 2, exhibiting impressive fluidity for a game running on the Sega Master system. While there are noticeable drops in animation frames, the overall presentation exceeds expectations for an 8-bit title. Hit detection remains precise and special moves are faithfully replicated, although players may find themselves as somewhat constrained by the Master System's two-button controller compared to the six-button layout of arcade cabinets. Nevertheless, the game still manages to offer a satisfying gameplay experience with responsive controls that allow players to execute manoeuvres and unleash devastating attacks with relative ease. Well, relative ease if you can get your head around the new two-button layout, that is. Street Fighter 2 for the Master System may not replicate the full arcade experience, but it undoubtedly stands as a remarkable achievement on the platform, showcasing the ingenuity and dedication of its developers. Moving away from the intricacies of character control and animation nuances, let's delve into the fascinating realm of stage backgrounds within Street Fighter 2 for the Sega Master System. Keen-eyed players may observe that certain elements are conspicuously absent from many of the stages, with varying degrees of asset emissions across different settings. This often serves as a simple reminder that as beautiful as this game looks in places, you are very much still playing a Master System game. Now let's turn our attention to one of the game's standout features, the music. Now, as an avid enthusiast of game soundtracks, I find the reimagined melodies of Street Fighter 2 rearranged for the 8-bit Sega system truly enchanting. In many ways, the game serves as a remarkable demake, predating the trend of demakes by several years. The music in particular exemplifies this as one of the multiple elements that makes this version memorable for those who have seen or played it. Despite its quirks and limitations, Street Fighter 2 for the Master System is far from being the definitive port of the beloved title. However, its unique history and idiosyncratic nature render it a compelling addition to any gaming collection. While it may not appeal to everyone, I find its existence to be a delightful novelty. Indeed, this game stands as an impressive technical achievement and an essential artefact of Brazilian gaming history, deserving of recognition and admiration for its mere existence. Unfortunately, acquiring a physical copy of this game can prove to be a daunting task, as it often commands exorbitant prices online, leaving even enthusiasts longing for its tangible presence. Still, if you want Street Fighter games for dirt cheap, don't forget to use my instant gaming links down below. And if you want more Street Fighter related content from me, subscribe and watch my X-Men vs Street Fighter upload now.